All right, hi, this is Will, and I just wanted to do one uh, last click PLC with the factor IO in case anybody's still interested in it. But uh, here's some of the stuff that we like to do, and we kind of talked about it a little bit in the box order is, you know, we can take an existing scene from factor IO and just get rid of all the sensors. The idea being you need to pick what type of sensor you need and where you should locate that sensor to get the job done. And here, you know, we have two emitters, so we drop pallets in both uh, conveyors. They start going here. Pallets go straight through to the remover circuit here. Pallets on the second conveyor, what we call path two, they have to go and they have to divert onto this first path and then go to the remover. So it's kind of this alternating merge process that you have to go through to uh, move boxes efficiently. Now, for this little... Uh, scene that we have. We have start, stop, reset, which the reset only uh, affects the pallet counter. And basically the idea is, you know, we give them seven or ten minutes and uh, run time, you know, they can have as much time as they need to set up the program, but to see how fast they can do it. And, you know, it's efficient handling so it doesn't jam, boxes don't fall off the conveyor, and just to see uh, how many you can get at the um, you know, in a certain time frame. Now, you can use the, uh, you can force the actuators on to see what happens and, you know, come up with a concept of, or a roadmap of how you need to control the process and, uh, you know, then try it out. So, when we look at, and let me get rid of that one for a second, if we take a look at the actual factory I.O. scenes that come with the platform, and again, uh, factory IO has a bunch of scenes and they're all really good. You can kind of change them a little bit. But we start out with this converge station, which it two paths into a single one. And we don't have this box, we have the push buttons. And the other thing that we have that's different is this one right over here, it has like this um, stopper arm. So when boxes come here, you know, they just stop and then they get diverted. Now we got rid of that so if the logic is wrong and if it doesn't stop it's going to fall on the ground. Um, so it's a little, I guess a little trickier than this one. And here, this is your palette for if you want to make scenes or create scenes. And you know, you can switch between the run mode that is our normal operation and the palette goes away and then the edit mode where you can see what's going on and you can you know, choose your pallets, you can choose your boxes, you can choose items that go on the boxes and they can be color-coded, which is your blue, green, or gray. Um, you can pick your conveyors, but right now for what we are, we're telling, we're trying to get them to pick sensors, and the sensors are down here. Now, it's a little odd, you have to hover over, but to find out what type of sensor it is, it's in this corner, but you have to hover over the actual sensor and know what it is, so Here's your capacitive sensor, a diffuse sensor, um, an inductive sensor, those are your main sensors. Down here is a retroreflective sensor, and here's the uh, accompanying mirror reflector that goes with it. And here are the light array elements that you know, we used in the box sorter. So you can create your own scene. If you wanted to put, if let's just say we wanted a capacitive sensor, uh, somewhere on here for some reason. All you have to do it when you're creating scenes and what the students would do is just kind of drag it into the appropriate position and you know that one I actually got it right on the conveyor which is a little unusual but you can see this red beam it's pointed in the wrong direction. So any fine adjustments that you need um, you can go and here we need to rotate 180 degrees so we need to click this and click this and you can see now it's pointing in the right direction. Uh, if we needed to duplicate it we can do that. If we weren't on the conveyor and needed to get there by default it moves in the horizontal direction. Um, but if you needed to move it in the vertical direction you can go in there and now your movement is going to be vertical. So if for some reason you wanted to know if there was a tall box there you could kinda have it hanging in air, but uh, we aren't going to use that setup. And 
what we have for the actual program that you know I kind of came up with quickly is uh, we use all capacitive sensors and then we have one uh, retroreflective sensor at the very end to tell the remover circuit when to work. So uh, we just use capacitive sensors to tell what position the box is in. Now for our actual click program you know, we have the first time through we want to reset all the outputs to uh, inactive. But, and one of the great features of the Click PLC is it has such easy to use uh, edge triggers. And we're interested in when the leading edge of the pallet is going past the sensor. So that's the transition from a low level signal to a high level. So we need the rising edge. But then we're also interested in the trailing edge of the pallet when it actually clears a sensor and is on onto the next conveyor point. <clears throat> and so we have falling edges too. And you know they're great. You should use them in your programs, but they're great to use, and they're uh, they're actually easier than what we think of as uh, well. Certainly, the higher dollar um, PLCs like uh, Allen Bradley or Siemens, these are actually easier to use. Um, so that's what we have. So uh, the other thing we have to do for this is we have to make sure we're in the right configuration. So if I go into this, I'm going to put in weight, but we can go into our drivers, and this will set up where all our signals are. Now, again, for the Click PLC, we need to have the Modbus client. Um, and we need to have the offset addresses that offset the Modbus addresses that the Click PLC uses with the coil addresses that um, Factory IO uses. And Factory IO will start out at coil zero, but our coil in the um, Click PLC, if we can find, let's see, coil. Coil 0 doesn't exist. We start at coil 1. And if we look at what that is Modbus address wise, and another, again, great feature of the click is it displays the Modbus address. Its address is really 16385, but that is for C1. Now, in factory IO world, it starts out at C0, which ha would have an offset address of 384. So if we look here for the offset for C1 is 16384. And if we go into configuration, that shows the offset for the inputs. So we have the input starting at C1 and we have the output starting at C100. But again, in Factor IO's world, C1 for the click PLC is really C0 in Factory IO and uh, C100, coil 100 is really coil 99. So, yeah, have to be aware of that. Um, and this just shows that the stop is normally closed contact and also the retroreflective, since there's no boxes out there, it's, uh, you know, it's normally active there too. So, both of those are active. We can connect up our little green check mark shows that we're connected and if we look at the programming a little bit further besides the edge triggers you know what we use here is we have a integer register that tells us what type of mode we're in and when we start out neither conveyor is in charge so it's mode zero if conveyor one or path one is in charge then it's mode one and path two is in control then it's a uh, mode select is two so we have uh, logic that just moves that mode select in there and we have uh, some signals that tell us when one of the path is in waiting state and we'll see that uh, it's pretty obvious what happens and then which one is in charge is basically uh, you know this is just a bit that tells us if uh, conveyor one is in charge or conveyor two and then we have uh, conveyor on and off signals uh, the transfer is actually that diverter that moves from path 2 to path 1 and then we have the output conveyors and down here we have uh, the process boxes processed and then we have to move that to a different register because 
again, this, if we look at the Modbus address for that um, counter, and that's the actual uh, real-time counting value, that has an address of 449153. Now the first four just says it's a register, and that's not usable, but still the address of 49153 is not recognized by the factory I.O. So we have to move it into DS2, which would have, if we look at its Modbus address, actually has an address in the Modbus world of 2. We get rid of that first 4, and it just has address 2. And that is easily uh, recognizable by the factory I.O. And again, the click PLC address 2 in the uh, factory I.O. world will look like uh, register address 1. So you have to keep that in mind. So if we're starting out, let's take a look at this program. We're going right into the PLC. And that should start us out at a known initial uh, condition. I was uh, doing some practice tests to make sure that it would work. Um, so if we go in here, we're going to start up our system. And you can see down here I do have a box count because I was just seeing that it looked good. So, And if I take it off halt, I can reset it to zero. Our stop light is, or lamp is on, our start is off. So as soon as I hit start, both of these boxes are going to drop at the same time. Now they're both going to move down at the same time and by virtue of them coming down equal, the one on path 1 is going to hit this sensor before the one on path 2 hits this sensor. And that's the determining factor of who's in control. So the first one will go all straight through and then the one from this path will be diverted down here and then go through and that'll start the merging process uh, back and forth. So we can take a look here. And so they're coming down. And so this one's in charge since it gets to its target position first. This one has to wait. And as soon as that box clears, now it diverts. And, you know, it'll go into this little merging process straight through. And then it'll come down. Now, when we do this, and one of the things that the students can do, originally we had just sensors here. But sometimes the box didn't stop in time, so we had to put or I put an additional sensor back here so that it would stop at this point. Um, you know, when the box actually gets to this point is when it turns on this little roller conveyor. And, you know, this is the idea of, you know, how many boxes can you process um, in the most efficient fashion? And it's got to alternate through. You can't just... I don't know if it actually will process more boxes if you just keep going straight through, straight through, straight through. But, you know, the idea is to get them alternating. And, you know, again, the way that this one's different, if you don't stop that box and it falls off the edge, uh, you know, that's not a good thing. So you do have uh, a few bits of control here that you have to do. And, you know, it's a pretty good process. You get to figure out you know, what type of sensors would you want to use and why, you know, why do you locate them where you would locate them to get the uh, best, most efficient type of operation out of your system. So that's a handy little thing that uh, Factor IO can do. And, you know, this is just uh, a little setup that you can use with the Click PLC. So, you know, your Click PLC can do a little double duty with uh, running the trainer and uh, running the Factor IO if you have it. So we've run a couple minutes and we've already got about 25 boxes. So um, I don't know what we get in 10 minutes, but the idea is, you know, see how well you can do. So that's our little demo for the uh, Click PLC and just taking one of the factory I was scenes and, you know, just start out by getting rid of all the sensors and say to your students here, figure it out, make it work. All right. Enjoy.